another video and today um first of all i can record so much more because i have a lot of time because i'm in a snowstorm <laughs> and i am uh yeah experiencing a snowstorm so but i was doing some makeup today on myself actually and i know i'm always talking about using preservatives in your product and doing quality control before you actually distribute your product to the public. Um, I had someone email me and she was questioning. So let me just say the top questions I get is, are, I should say, how do you know what phases your product should have? And um, how do you test? How do you send things out? But a lot of people do not no preservatives or use preservatives and because people scare people away saying oh i have nothing in my product it's safe the issue there is people you know how you keep your products in your house you may keep um let's say a lip gloss in your in your little drawer and things like that or you may have a pair of eyelashes or some eyelash glue you just use it here and there um for me i wear makeup every almost every day full face so i use eyelash glue all the time but certain products need to be uh, discarded after a certain time. And if you don't have preservatives in your products, on especially products that are going to come in contact with water, um, saliva from your mouth, um, tears, water, um, you really have to think about natural preservatives or alternatives. So I'm on Formulated Sample Shop, and I talk about this website a lot. But if you take some time, to go through this website, I promise you, there's something that can meet the need for everyone. And as a caveat, I will say, if you're selling eyelashes, we talk a lot about applicable makeup. If you're selling eyelashes, really be careful about those, you know, nobody's hand making their eyelashes, okay? That pre-made strip of glue, that clear residue, people break out from that as well. I, a couple of weeks ago, I actually had a schedule appointment with a dermatologist because I brought a pair of mink eyelashes. I put them on whatever I was, I've been using the same glue. Um, and I put them on and the adhesive strip completely stripped my eyelash line to where my eyes were swollen and it looked like I had got stung by bees in my face. That's how bad it was. It was really puffy. So, um, my issue how let's say if it was your business i brought the eyelashes from what you could do is if i came to you and told you this you could recall all of the eyelashes that happened and go back to your vendor and explain show documentation customer pictures of course be mindful of privacy and you know that's how you can start it but the thing that makes this easier is if you start doing little barcodes or batch numbers on your products, that's a major thing. And I forgot to mention that in my last video about your recall strategy and, and quality control, but having barcodes and batch numbers, you can get that stuff off of Amazon, like strips to put on your products. Even if you buy products like from a uh, vendor, so they're already prepackaged and you're just buying wholesale products and redistributing um, like private label products you can do batches as well because the vendor you buy from makes the makeup or whatever you have in batches so really uh look at that um something else that we don't think about there's something called like little mites that we all get you wear makeup eyelashes all that stuff it gets in your products that can be the cause of it if the person that's using your products isn't taking the proper care and i always advocate advocate putting care cards in your products Assume that your client knows nothing about how to apply lip gloss, eyelashes, chapstick, lip scrub, uh, face peel, face mask, shampoo, whatever. Always have care instructions, especially with a small business, on top of the directions on the back of that product. Okay, We're just making sure we have all bases covered. Now, if they choose to use it wrong, you can say, no, no, no. I may sh I know my product is safe because of these things. However, if you have an issue, I'm always going to check it out. Don't ever dismiss them, but make sure you can go back and source it. Then if you have a vendor you're buying products from, you say, hey, my client had this issue. Do you know of any other issues you've had? Document. Provide a solution to your, co uh, your client, your customer. Okay, that's how you can do it. But anyway, so on Formula Sample Shop, they have 
something here and you see it says antimicrobials okay when we're in our homes making products or even in a in a factory or even in a, a, a space that's designated just for this germs are everywhere pollutants are everywhere dust is everywhere unless you are in an icu with a, a high quality hospital sterilizer you're gonna have risk of con contamination even if you're trying your best it's not your fault it's just the way things happen okay so here's just a page that formulated sample shop of course i'll link it in the description has on different antimicrobials that they do have here um they also have different combinations of microbials that you can use to if you're buying a natural preservative to help strengthen it i always talk about preservative cap 2 and preservative cap 5 from tkb trading but you there are all other alternatives to those two um uh preservatives also and antimicrobials also what you also want to know is and you have, can indicate the shelf life of the product because the certain uh a certain uh, preservatives have a shelf life so you you add that into your product shelf life okay now again i'm not a chemist but this is just the basics of of how it starts beware that certain and certain um antimicrobials and preservatives uh, they work with certain products. So you might be have a lick a product that is water based. It will need a preservative for water based products. Uh, same thing with emulsions. Water emulsions. You have to have a, a preservative that is safe for the emulsion that will mix well with it. Okay. If you have a product containing water and will be in contact with water, like for example a lip scrub, you need a preservative. No excuses. Lip gloss. No excuses. Chapstick no excuses okay and uh that is that they also have something here it's called keys to successful product preservation okay and they talk about starting starting clean ensuring compatibility okay like i just said check the temperature and the ph you should have a temperature gun and a ph tester with the ph strips to check your product that is not too acidic verify the stability of the product finish clean Consider your packaging, okay, and sterilization of that packaging. Using Dawn soap is not enough. It's not enough. Using Lysol wipes, not enough. Just using straight bleach, okay. You have to. There are certain ways you have to use bleach and dilute it, but again, that's not enough. And remember, you can't. People can't put bleach, even if you're sanitizing your tools. Which tools can be sanitized with bleach solution, uh, which cannot, okay? So that's really what you want to think about. And that's on Formulator Sample Shop, free resource. The next thing I want to talk about is formulas. People ask me, well, about the phases, like I said before. Phases are going to just, uh, the, in the simplest form, phases are going to be based on different consistencies of your product and different chemicals for example i'm just going to pull up and this is a free formula on making cosmetics i just gave you two freebies and in those the way i'm talking listen for the hints <laughs> you can find what you need everywhere if you would just take your time to research a little bit you i bet you you'll find what you need okay so this is just for a silky cream eyeshadow right this is distilled water in phase a and sodium gluconate Okay, it's the chelating agent. So it starts the chelating process of um, that, that creamy consistency. All right. Then it goes to phase B, which is the glycerin and the xanthan gum, which is a thickener. So if you add the thickener to the chelating agent too soon, your product can probably have some formation issues. And then if you look at the method, it says mix phase A and C separately and heat to 800 degrees celsius then mix phase b okay so if you mix phase a and b before your, your time you're going to ruin the product and its consistency and the melting of certain ingredients as they form um and some ingredients need to be heated okay your phase a could be something simple as powder and liquid and the liquids that you use may need to be heated they may need, not need to be perfect example is if you're making a, a lipstick bullet a traditional lipstick you mixing you need to mix your waxes before you put in your your oxides and your micas if you mix 
all at once before stirring and, and heating it up over your mixer um, and over your, uh, your heating station, you're going to mess it up. And if you don't keep monitoring the temperature, you're going to mess the formula up, even as far as the pH, okay? So I'm just using this example. I, I'm sorry if I'm coming off confusing, but I'm just using this example so you can see what I mean by why you need different steps. So think of a phase as a step. Like when you're cooking, if you just throw all your, your seasoning, I'm Caribbean, so we cook in steps. If you just throw all your seasonings into the pot, you don't add, you don't marinate your, your meat with the green seasoning. Um, you don't add your meat seasoning. You don't add your, I don't know, let's, curry powder, whatever you have, and you just throw everything in the pressure cooker and that's it. It doesn't come out right. The same thing is how you should think about your cosmetics. If you throw everything in that, in that bowl, Without measuring, without weighing, without testing for pH, you're never going to have a formula because you don't know exactly what went where. And with these phases, it also is a quality control because you can see what goes wrong. Some people say, well, I can't, I can't get this formula to be this consistency or I can't get my finish to look like this. Look at your product as it happens in steps and see what step it is. And then from that step, you can pinpoint the ingredients. And that's how you can solve um, some issues by yourself. You know, you don't have to pay someone to, you know, to tell you that. You know what I mean? Um, because you're doing it, you're hands on on your own. And then if you do go to a cosmetic chemist or you do go to someone, you can say, hey, man, I get to step B and I add, I don't know, um, this ingredient and it my product just falls apart they can point it out to you there's forums with different cosmetic chemists and things like that so you know you can you can do uh do that okay but as you see here because it's going to be a creamy eyeshadow and it has water like we have in phase a you're going to need a preservative and again you have to do your own research. I'm going to give you the links in the description to these exact pages. But this is how a real true formula looks. Put your ingredients, the function, what it does, like I have in the book. Percentage, your weight, your weight in grams and ounces. Your vol volume in, table in teaspoons. Okay? And that's how you go about it. And from there, you can do what you need to do. All right. So I hope this video helps and provides some clarification. Um, and I really, I really uh, hope you all go back and watch my video with the formula calculator because I got it from Formula Sample Shop, and I think it'll be a great resource to you, especially for those that you know are not really tech savvy. They don't know about Excel or how to use Excel, whatever. It's a great learning tool, you know. And these are just the steps that you're going to be. This is how you create a competitive advantage. You're thinking about things more than your competition is doing. You know, you're you're doing the hard stuff. You're doing the stuff nobody wants to do. <laughs> um, you're you're putting in time to figure out what's going on. And, you know, I, I know someone that's um, a business owner and they're so so anal about their business and i and i just used to wonder like why are you like that like oh my god like just but is you know they could be a little nicer but it's good because they know their whole process front to back you know they don't just throw it off on somebody and throw it off on somebody like can you do this for me can you do this for me you have to research 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 most of the questions i have are you know questions again that i personally i cannot answer and i don't want to answer because you have to look at it first now there's there's difference between again simple question just a, a innocent question but you've been doing the work versus not i have like i mean you guys will be i mean i have young girls coming and asking me about these things you know and i have um older people coming and asking me about these things so there's no wrong question but i will always ask did you exhaust all options to research once you say yes okay then i'll go ahead and give it to you because i also have to take the time and, you know, I want you just to get in the exercise and the habit of this, especially right now with COVID. 
A lot more resources like this, formulating and stuff that you would need, are going to be available online because a lot of places are operating online. So it's actually, sometimes you can see the good and the bad. It's helping you. Everything going online and inventory running out, it's actually benefiting you because now you can go and research for your own stuff that you may not have been able to find. So in every negative situation, okay, COVID or whatever, there's always some positive, especially if you change your your perspective of, oh, you know, of I can't find no information. Nobody won't help me. You know, that kind of attitude. Come at it a different angle, you know? Like I said, don't give up. Use all your tools. Compare notes. And I promise you'll have everything you need. Um, Once again, thank you for everyone. Like I had a bunch of book orders the last two days. Thank you for everyone that purchased um, and the questions that resulted from that. This is why another reason why I'm making the video. Thank you. Um, It really makes me happy that uh, when people start their own business, because I know how it feels, you know, and I'm really happy that people are feeling The book is helping them and that they, you know, you feel good. You feel you don't feel alone, you know, and um, I hope you all stay safe. It is a snowstorm where I am. So I'm going to be turning on the heat um, and trying to answer some emails and have a wonderful week. Bye bye.